Hi, welcome to Canyon Jiu Bite Size PD. Today we're going to be talking about motivation in the classroom. My name is Angie Holden and I am a specialist with ISD. I'm excited to be with you today to explore the topic of motivation and see um, what comes to mind and what you can reflect on and commit to today in your learning. Just a couple of things to be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. This PD is pre-recorded, so this will just be accountability to yourself for staying focused on your learning and um, moving um, through the professional development and opportunities for reflection today. Um, like I said, this is a pre-recorded PD, so um, I'm going to um, recommend a couple of times during this PD to pause, to review some of the information and reflect and record some of your um, reflections on the learning task notebook that is linked with the presentation. If you go through this PD and you have any comments or questions or a need for clarification, don't hesitate to reach out to me by email. Um, and I would be happy to connect with you to um, support you with your learning. Like in Canyons, we always connect to our MTSS framework. And today we're really focusing on that um, student achievement commitment of building positive relationships, setting up high expectations, and committing to student improvement. So as we move through this today, those are our commitments through our framework. Um, just take a minute and look at these learning intentions and success criteria to make sure we really know um, what we're headed today. We're going to really focus in on intrinsic and ex extrinsic motivation um, in our classroom so that we can build and foster motivation with our students and with ourselves. Sometimes that's really important as well. How will you know if you're successful? Um, we are going to talk about building relational capacity and how you're going to apply that to your classroom. We're going to talk about creating a welcoming classroom environment and belonging and kind of taking a self inventory on how you're doing on that and what you can do to improve that. Create high expectations and norms for community in your classroom and then leave with some ideas of how to implement strategies to build intrinsic motivation um, for our learning. So let's just get started and jump right into our intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. If you haven't had a chance, um, I would suggest to pause right now and make a copy of the learning task notebook. It will really support you with um, some of the information on the slides and just your reflection and learning. So take a minute right now, we'll do a quick little check-in. What are the recent accomplishments that have made you feel the most proudest and successful? And it can be in your professional life, your personal life, anything that has just really made you feel like, wow, I'm proud to do that or I've been successful. So this is a good time to pause the video and record some of your thoughts on your learning task notebook. All right, hopefully you were able to record some of the ideas and things that make you feel proud. Sometimes we have to know what makes us have those feelings to be motivated. And the same is true for us as educators and for our students. So let's jump into today's agenda. Like I said, we're going to talk about relational capacity and belonging, understanding the difference and the advantages and disadvantages of both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation then really taking it and applying and finding a balance in your classroom that's going to work with your current situation and with the current students that you have. And then, of course, always making one commitment and reflecting on that and following through with your learning. All right, so a quote on relational capacity. Community is more important to learning than any other technique. For our students to be able to learn and improve and grow, they have to feel like they have good relationships and that they belong to the learning community, which has been really hard the last little while being remote learning, in school, people being sick. And so now more than ever, we have to really um, up our efforts in developing relational capacity um, within our classrooms. I also think that relational capacity, it's important to understand what relational capacity is. And it really is the degree of trust and safety 
that a group of learners or a group of people or a team feel when they are learning and working together. And so teams or classes or groups that have really high um, relational capacity, um, some of the things that can describe them is that they have a really positive energy or they have a comfort level feeling vulnerable with each other or discussing or talking. And they also have um, a shared ownership of what should be happening in the classroom. So expectations and accountability for what's happening in a classroom. So thinking about relational capacity, I want you to take a minute um, and pause this um, after you, we go through these questions to reflect on your answers. What adjectives would you describe your classroom or school environment or team? How are students' differences recognized positively? How are students engaged in creating and monitoring community and culture? And what is in place to foster community ownership? So pause the recording and take a minute and be specific. Give some specific things that you're doing right now in your classroom or with your teams or those who you work with and record your answers on your learning task notebook. All right, I am a quote person. And I think this um, sums up relational capacity and moving into motivation. When students have a high self-efficacy, they see the value in the activity and are supportive, are in a supportive environment, they achieve their highest levels of motivation. So thinking back to those reflecting on your proudest moment or when you were successful, um, think about how you felt and why you felt that way. Did you have self-efficacy? Did you feel successful? Was there value to you in why you felt successful or proud? And did you have support? A lot of times those three components exist when we're highly motivated or highly successful. So how do we take what we know about feeling proud and successful and transfer that to our students and help them feel motivated? One of the first things that we can do is create a welcoming environment. And this is a great little checklist to just um, reboot or reflect on your, your environment, whether it's with a team or whether your students, a class, with anybody. Is there an inclusive design? Does it include everybody? Is everyone welcome in that environment? Are there themes or connections that make it a fun place to be or a vision or a mission of something that this is what we do in this classroom. This is how we function in this team, almost like norms, um, making it something that is part of that community. Is there opportunity for everyone, whole class or whole team interactions? Does everyone get a chance to be engaged? Not just those who choose to be engaged or like to talk or be outgoing, but is it, interaction with every single person in that environment. Also think about, is there mutual accountability? Have you had discussions about what it looks like to be in this environment and what it looks like to hold each other accountable? And then the fun part are events and traditions. So one of the fun events and traditions in my classroom and in professional development that I do are um, avid claps or celebrations or fun claps and themes to just celebrate those fun things that are happening. So think about the events and traditions that are in your classroom environment. And um, this is a great little just time to reflect and think about if it's not a welcoming environment, which one of these am I missing? Where could I improve? What could I add? Another great um, opportunity we have for motivating students and creating that relational capacity is creating high expectations and norms. Um, and I think um, sometimes we make assumptions that people know what the expectations and norms are or that we've gone over them enough that people should know. And I think it's really important. You'll notice in our PDs, we always review the norms. Um, if you've seen them before or you haven't, we just always reconnect and ground ourselves to those norms. And so this is a part of creating a positive environment 
creating a safe space where people know how to operate or giving them a chance to know where they need to go with their attention or their focus for learning. Um, are you asking lots of reflective prompts and giving built in time to reflect? Sometimes we learn, 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 and don't have a chance to process what we've learned or to process and understand and be reflective. And I think that is um, so important as educators with our students to teach them to have that process instead of just checking off the box and getting things done. But why are they learning what they're learning and how did they feel about it? Was it hard? Did they need lots of practice? How are we allowing the opportunity for reflection? Um, this process of reflection also gives us a chance to acknowledge what was successful, what they did great. It also gives time for problem solving conversations and working through um, problems together as a group with individual students based on their needs um, and giving those opportunities. It's also a way um, sharing reflections to include new ideas and thoughts and things that maybe it, myself as an educator or a presenter that I've, I've never thought about and someone comes up with a great idea and, and honoring and um, thinking about how we can take time to reflect on all of those things. So these are all great components of relational capacity that can set a great tone for motivation. So take a minute and look at this checklist and see, is there anything that you're like, celebrate um, and acknowledge your success? Is there something where you're like, hmm, I haven't thought about that. How could that be fostered in my classroom, with my team, in whatever environment or setting you're working through? All right, again, another quote, motivation is an investment decision. Students have attention, have time, attention, and effort, and they are making a decision every single day about whether they want to invest those things in our classrooms or in something else. They're gonna make a choice. And so it's an investment decision of where they wanna put their intention, their engagement, their focus. So making your classroom worth investing in is about creating a space where students' time, energy, and effort will be rewarded. And I think us as educators feel the same way um, with our time and energy and effort. If we're rewarded, um, we're more and more likely to decide what we wanna invest in. And the same is with our students. So how can this apply to understanding intrinsic and extrinsic motivation in our classroom? Well, first of all, we need to know the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. If you look at this slide, it gives you kind of some examples of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is the goal and is where we want to be. And extrinsic motivation is also something that we need as we grow and develop. So let's talk about intrinsic motivation. This means that it's internally rewarding to the person or to yourself, and it's a choice. It's that investment decision. It means that you are getting something that's rewarding and satisfying and that it meets a goal that comes from within you and that it meets um, some basic needs like autonomy, competence, relationships, purpose, intrinsic motivation, is um, that internal motivation that makes us grow as human beings. Extrinsic motivation is you're motivated to get an external reward. So you do something, you get something. Um, your goal is focused on an outcome. It may not just meet your basic needs, but it's motivating because there's a reward. So you make a decision again, to invest your energy and time and effort into something because of the outcome. Um, so it involves um, external rewards like a prize, money, fame, power, or avoiding maybe negative consequences can also be an extrinsic motivator. And so it's important to know the difference of both. It's also important to know that um, it's we need both, that both are, um, 
important. Both are play a part in motivation. And depending on the students we're working with, the people that we're working with, the teams that we're working with, what's happening in our society, our environment, um, there's so many factors that um, affect both of these. So it's really important to understand the difference. And then the next thing we're going to do is look at the benefits and advantages and disadvantages of each. So as you're following along in your learning task notebook, you're going to see this chart. I'm gonna just give you a couple of minutes to review and kind of um, make sure you have a basic understanding. So basically we're moving towards the love of learning, which becomes more of an intrinsic motivation and the desire for reward, which is the extrinsic. So take a couple of minutes or pause the video and just highlight these and make sure that you understand um, the comparisons and the differences between both of these. You can see that there's pros and cons for both that um, intrinsic is again that internal and extrinsic is that external that they need a reward um, intrinsic becomes natural and it's something that comes from within where that extrinsic is something that we set up a manufactured condition pbis rewards things that we design um, to do that the most important thing to remember is that intrinsic motivation has long-term benefits. It's better in the long run. And extrinsic, um, the benefits are short-term, which we need a lot, but that sometimes that may not last over time. And so let's move to the next section. This is also um, something that we just wanna review. You might be thinking, does extrinsic motivation work? Do I need it? Yeah, it's okay to have extrinsic motivation and yes, it works. But does it create dependencies? Sometimes, sometimes students become dependent on that and lose that ability to find another reason or the um, instant satisfaction of regaining a, a reward becomes kind of non-existence because eventually it's not as rewarding because it's the same thing over and over and over. So again, we have to remember um, that it can create dependencies or it can probably become least, less effective because we're overusing that extrinsic motivation. Can extrinsic motivation affect self-esteem? Um, Sometimes, yeah, because students get to a point where there are situations where um, they don't get extrinsic motivation and they wonder why they're not being successful. So it's really important to make good decisions about the extrinsic motivation that you're using. Is intrinsic motivation better? Um, eventually, yeah, that's where we want our students to get. But we know that the students um, that we work with are in different developmental stages, they're at different learning situations and um, different parts of life. So we have to know when to give and take. So is there room for both? Definitely, there is room for both. And it's becoming an expert and knowing um, when each one needs to be applied and when you can gradu gradually release the other one. So let's take a look at these extrinsic strategies. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and go through and just star the former strategy that you have in your classroom right now and then look at the advantages and dis disadvantages from these strategies what is working well and what isn't and maybe the disadvantages are outweighing the advantages and maybe this is a time for you to reflect and see if there's maybe one that you need to use less of or maybe there's one that you haven't tried that you want to use more so take a minute and pause the video and just highlight and star and reflect on extrinsic strategies that exist in your classroom So after looking at these extrinsic 
strategies, you can see that there's advantages and disadvantages for both. And we won't really go in depth today of those, but I think this is a great resource to, if you're struggling with motivation for your students to look at what exists and maybe what needs to change or maybe is not an advantage anymore. This next slide is also on your learning task notebook, and this gives you strategies that can um, reinforce both extrinsic and intrinsic mindsets. So depending on how you apply them, um, they can either become extrinsic or intrinsic. So for example, positive reinforcement. Um, I've worked with a lot of students that um, get um, a lot out of positive reinforcement. I've also worked with students who get a lot out of negative reinforcement, like they like to get attention for negative attention because it's better than no attention at all. So really looking at the advantages and disadvantages of what's happening. Um, the other is assessing behavior and effort. Do we rely on more what their behavior is or their effort? Do we use competition? That can be, there can be pros and cons. Teacher relationship, um, instructional design, and avoiding penalties. So again, pause the video, take a minute, highlight through the star, and maybe make some personal reflections on things that you are using in your classroom. And are they giving you the results for student motivation that you need? All right, and then the last one is group C. These are motivational strategies that could be best characterized as intrinsic or internal. And this is eventually where we want to get, right? But in reality, we know that we're working with developing human beings or people who struggle um, with different areas. And so we need to just know that this is a work in progress, that it may not happen overnight. And um, there but this is where we're working towards. So as we're working with teams, with students, with groups, we wanna make sure that we're helping them see the advantages of having self-improvement um, and that they can make their own goals. We want to see that they have increased responsibility. Um, we wanna see that they can get to problem solving and inquiry-based learning. So what kinds of things are we doing to motivate students to see the benefits and advantages? And then they also need to just have um, some creativity and some opportunities to just meet their basic needs. And I think this is a really hard one right now with students um, having the ups and downs of a pandemic and different things happening in our society. So really just trying to create opportunities in that relational capacity building to um, help students see that this is eventually where they want to go. So again, take a moment, pause the video, highlight, star, reflect, what is working well? How do you foster these characteristics in your classroom? All right, so welcome back. So basically the um, most important thing is deciding what the balance of intrinsic and extrinsic looks like in your classroom. And this gives you just a little bit of um, an opportunity to make a list of those things that you're implementing in your classroom. And is one side more heavy than the other? Again, we talked about both are necessary and both are needed, but is there a balance or are you relying too much on one or the other? If we rely too much on intrinsic, we know that there's a lot of students that are going to need some support and they're not quite there at that point for satisfying those psychological needs and they need that extrinsic reward. But if all I'm doing is extrin extrinsic rewards and tickets and points and everything, am I fostering any um, intrinsic motivation with my students? Um, so take a minute, pause the video and make a quick list of those things and then identify your opportunities for where you might be able to cre create some more balance because motivation, the key is having a balance between both to make sure that you're um, meeting the needs of those who you're working with. So take a minute and pause and we'll see you back in a second.
All right, so now that we've had a time to kind of quickly bite-sized pieces dive into intrinsic, extrinsic, looking at the balance in your classroom, how do we um, help students move towards building intrinsic motivation? And there is a great article that's linked in the resources at the end of the slides that if you want to explore um, or deepen your learning, I would encourage you to read that. But I'm going to give you a quick overview of um, an acronym. It would, wouldn't be a PD without an acronym of MAP. So how do we get our students to that intrinsic motivation? The first thing we want to make sure is that we're developing mastery. Are we giving students the opportunity to learn? to practice, but most importantly, do we allow mistakes? Do we allow that active dialogue and reflective prompts for students to be able to develop mastery on their own? Building that safe and trusting environment can give students a place where they can develop mastery and know that it's okay to try and fail, try and succeed, and talk about their journey. Gaining autonomy is the next acronym, the A for MAP. And autonomy is really, do they have control over their learning? Are they leading their own learning? Are they seeing that this investment is leading to something? Because they're gonna put their time and energy into something. And if they don't have that autonomy to have a voice and choice and understand um, that they have that, some students may just be resistant and um, that can just change their motivation or their engagement. So how are you giving students autonomy? Are you giving them choice in assignments? Are you giving them choice boards or um, different ways to apply their learning so that they have some autonomy? The last is P, so building purpose. Are we using teacher clarity? Are you giving them a rationale? Are you giving them the why behind what they're learning? Um, I have a son and he is very stubborn. And if he does not understand the purpose or the why, and it seems like busy work or a task that has no meaning, he won't do it. He needs a purpose. He needs a plan. He needs the why. And that's so important when we're building intrinsic motivation um, so that they can have that understanding and that why. So MAP is a, a simple acronym um, to support us in helping develop motivation and increase a student's desire to learn. Is it going to be overnight? No, but these are general thoughts and things that you can do and check yourself and have some accountability. Are you allowing your students to have MAP to build that intrinsic motivation? And each student is on their individual journey. So it may look for different, different for different groups or different teams or even for ourselves as adults. So again, going back to MAP and quotes, um, in order to be motivated, every single human being has to have mastery, purpose, autonomy, and belonging. And we've touched briefly on each of those things. And study after study on motivation mentions one or more of those four things as being necessary for students to be motivated. So finding one of those things what's going to connect and make that motivating for that student. Those students that you might be struggling or think that they're not motivated, this is a great little checklist of four things um, that you can reflect on to see if they have at least one of them. The more the better, but at least one where you can connect with them and find what motivates them. I'm also a strong believer in if we don't check ourselves, how can we check the other people that we're teaching or that we're around? So this is a moment for you to check your motivation. And I'm going to ask you to take a, take these following steps. Think about the achievements that you've um, achieved in your life or just lately. Examine your strengths and understand what you can build on. How, what are the strengths that you have or that you've had that you've recognized that you've been able to build on and be successful? Take a moment and determine what other people see as your strengths and key capabilities. And if you're not sure, ask those people that are around you. What do they see as your strengths and your key capabilities? 
and then set achievable goals for yourself, work to achieve them and enjoy that achievement. If we're gonna ask our students to go through this process and be motivated, we have to model this ourselves and we also have to understand the process to make sure that the opportunities that we're providing in our classrooms or with the groups that we work with have the ability to go through these things. This would also be a great activity to try with students or with a team or with a group um, to see what is motivating to those people. When you talk about achievements in your life and you talk about strengths, it can really open up what motivates people and what their purpose, what they've mastered, what their autonomy or their choices that they've been able to make for themselves to feel motivated. All right, so now's your time to commit and reflect. What is something that you were excited that you are excited about to implement to build motivation in your classroom? What's one takeaway from just the things that we've um, reviewed today, the time that you've had to reflect? What is one thing? I encourage you to think about what you're excited about or what you're going to commit to for improving motivation for yourself, for students, for those groups of people that you're around. So record your answer on your learning task notebook and set a date or a way that you're going to hold yourself accountable and what something that's going to motivate you. Maybe you need an extrinsic motivator to help you reach your commitment. There's nothing wrong with that. A good um, treat from Starbucks or a crumble cookie might be just the key to get you to commit to your um, goal today. As I mentioned earlier, there's a slide with links and resources to these articles that might be something that you really want to work on or go deeper. Again, a bite-sized PD just gives you kind of this that little bite, but here's an opportunity to go deeper. Thanks for joining the Bite Size PD today. I hope it's giving you some ideas and some time to just sit and reflect and think about how you can build relational capacity, how you can build um, motivation in your classrooms and being aware of the types of things that you're doing to build um, motivation and what are the advantages and disadvantages of both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So have a great day. Remember that you can find more learning at Canyons U or our Bite Size PD page. And don't forget if you're taking this class for relicensure credit to click on the link and submit um, the information required for there. Again, reach out if you have any other questions. Thanks for spending your time with me today and stay motivated.